Hi everyone, welcome to the next part of the tutorial reversing with HyperDVG. This session is a practical session in which we're gonna see some of the practical usage of HyperDVG debugger and we will analyze two real world scenarios and we'll use HyperDVG on that. So this is a practical session and as an overview, we will see some of the debugging scenarios. Then we will learn some new tricks like uh, alternative ways of uh, uh, debugging system calls and disabling a breakpoint uh, interception mechanism in HyperDVG. Then we will see a user mode application in which we will monitor the connection destinations of the TCP uh, protocol. Then we will uh, you then we'll sniff the traffic, the outgoing uh, network traffic of this application, and for the kernel mode part we will see uh, we will see different kernel modules of WinDVG. we will try to debug WinDVG by using HyperDVG. so there are some reasons we will discuss about why we we are uh, debugging WinDVG and our methodology then we will have a summary and a final note for the debugging scenarios, we uh, we will analyze two scenarios. The first scenario is a user mode application. First, we will try to intercept the system calls of this application. After that, we will try to analyze the user level uh, components of this application as well as monitoring network connections. And then we will uh, sniff the outgoing network traffic of this application. For the kernel mode part of uh, this session, we'll, we'll try to re reverse the uh, kernel mode co uh, components of uh, WinDVG and we'll monitor different kernel level components of WinDVG to understand the communication methods used in this debugger and we'll, we'll also use different hooks to help us understanding different parts of WinDVG. And it's also possible to debug some functionalities of HyperDVG by using uh, WinDVG. So about the new tricks. These are some of the things that we will use uh, in HyperDVG. The first thing is uh, if uh, if you're using syscall, exclamation mark syscall or bang syscall command, uh, it triggers some of the rare behaviors in your system. Then there are some alternative ways of uh, debugging system calls. And one of them is using EPT hooks. We can use classic EPT hooks for, uh, to uh, debug system calls. For example, the following commands is, uh, uh, is used to debug the, uh, the system calls. And it uh, and it's uh, like uh, like uh, using the syscall command. Generally, the above command just sets a breakpoint on Windows system, uh, the function in Windows that is responsible for handling system calls. And plus three is also added because uh, we're gonna change the we're gonna run this uh, swap JS uh, instruction because uh, uh, the interception is done in the kernel and after changing it, the GS of the kernel is loaded into the system. Uh, so the, the, this command is used for this purpose, uh, but in case if you don't have to access to Microsoft uh, symbol server, you don't know the address of uh, KI uh, Sysc, uh, system called 64, then you can try to read uh, MSR0XC508 to uh, by using RDMSR command. And after that, we will add plus three to, to this, to the uh, result that it's shown by this command. And we'll run uh, this code without the function name. Another trick that we'll use in this part is that by default, HyperDVG intercepts all the debugging uh, breakpoints. So no other debuggers like WinDVG, like x64DVG, none of them find a chance to handle the breakpoint. And uh, we will see that uh, WinDVG just trigger, triggers by running an int3 or 0xcc instruction to just pause the debugger so if hyperdvg intercept this breakpoint then when dvg no longer be able to pause the system so 
uh, we have to find a way to uh, just tell the hyper DVG not to intercept the breakpoints. And uh, after that, if we tell the hyper DVG not to intercept the breakpoints, the hyper DVG will re inject the interrupts and re, re inject the breakpoint uh, exceptions uh, to the uh, guest system. And, uh, we can use test breakpoint off or on command. Uh, to uh, telling hyper DVG what to do with the breakpoint. Now let's see the scenario in which we're gonna debug uh, socket connections in Windows. The socket connection uh, is a mechanism uh, in uh, Windows and in other operating system uh, which which enables to uh, which provides us uh, with some facilities to communicate over network over TCP over UDP. And the there is one function there's a famous function called socket function which is used to create a socket and represent an endpoint for the communication while there's other functions called connect and this function is uh, responsible for establishing the connection between a client and a server and the socket which allows the data uh, exchange between the server and the client and together these functions provide the functionalities for network programming and network communication in windows so here is a very uh, familiar uh, source code of uh, creating some socket connections you can see it. we also have some examples of using sockets in the previous parts uh, generally uh, as we see in the previous parts uh, the, Windows uses uh, NT, the NTDL, NT device IO control file to send the data over the network. Um, I think we conclude that in, in, in the previous uh, sessions, we conclude that it's system called number seven, but it might be changing the future version of Windows. So uh, it's better to check it before, before uh, using uh, the commands related to uh, this part and also this is the definition of this function from msdn and you can see that uh, as the first argument it gets file handle it gets another handle as event apc routine apc context and other parameters are also passed uh, to these functions among them io control code and uh, uh, an input buffer and input buffer length are interesting we will see them also the output buffer and output buffer length are important uh, generally if we want to monitor and if we want to uh hear some system calls uh we could use some uh there are plenty of resources like uh, dr dr memory project which in, in they they investigate all the system calling stru uh, structures and provide a good resource of seeing the system call structures and also it's possible to manually uh, investigate uh, the system calls by using both dynamic uh, analysis tools like hyper dvg win dvg x64 dvg or static analysis tools like ida pro and uh, from from the uh, dr doctor memory project you can see that uh, whenever system call number seven or nt uh, nt device io control file uh, system call is used the buffer is sent to the kernel using the following uh, uh, structure uh, so if i want to return to the previous uh, slide uh, you can see that the I, we, we have, we have uh, this input buffer and the structure for this input buffer is provided here. Uh, from this structure, one of the interesting parts is remote address. And uh, this uh, remote address holds the data that are relating, uh, holds the data that is relating to the connection. And the structure for this uh, remote address is uh, uh, into uh, SOCKADDR uh, underline in a structure. And uh, you can see uh, this structure is, has S in uh, family, uh, SIN uh, port, SIN address, and SIN zero for padding, probably. 
and as you can see we can uh, read both uh, the ip address and the port uh, port from uh, this uh, structure so uh, we, we just have to check uh, for the I ioctl uh, code uh, of the connect command and after that uh, we can intercept the uh, port address as well as the target ip address of the connection so <clears throat> After that, uh, we, we can monitor all of the outgoing connections of the system. We will use the same methodology for send command. Uh, there is also another uh, socket function uh, in Windows, uh, which is called send, which is called which is used for sending the data out of the out to the network. And uh, the I octal for this uh, for this send uh, function is AFD send or the uh, 0x1201f which is sent as the iocTL and the s structure request for uh, for sending data is defined like this and as you can see we have two uh, important uh, and interesting uh, fields like buffer array and buffer count where the actual data uh, is stored uh, and uh, for the for the uh, WSA buff or for the first uh, field of this structure buffer array the following structure is used which has a length and a, a, and a pointer to a buffer in which the data is stored so the this structure holds both the length and uh, the data uh, a, a pointer actually to the data which will be well, which will be eventually transmitted to the de designated address by uh, by knowing these informations we're gonna see uh, the network connections that are made by different applications in the user mode so let's see let's see some of these functionalities and see how they work for the purpose of the this um, section i try to uh, uh, change the source code that we previously used in uh, the previous parts uh, i add uh, like uh, another address resolving function get addr info which queries for the address of google.com uh, and send a packet to the google.com on port uh, 18 uh, and uh, it's like an http packet so we'll see what 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 is the response uh, from the google uh, if i want to just run it uh, the process id is here and after i press a key it sends the it uh, transmits the connection and as you can see uh, we, will, we have uh, we will get this uh, HTTP response which says that uh, uh, the address is permanently moved uh, the Google just gonna transfer us to the uh, safe Google uh, to, uh, to HTTPS version of the Google uh, so this is the response that we get from the Google by sending a simple HTTP request, which is a clear text request to the server of the Google. So let's try to investigate it by using HyperDVG. I try to uh, run, run the VM. And uh, let's uh, open the Visual Studio. I try to run HyperDVG from its source code. You can also use the, you can uh, directly use the binary files of the re release, the binary files of HyperDVG. Again, I connected a WinDVG to bypass the driver signature enforcement and i will try to connect to this uh, debuggy by using the same command that we used before uh,
Uh, okay, let's try, let's move uh, uh, file that we we just uh, made uh, for uh, for uh, connecting to Google. Uh, let's just uh, move it to the target. Uh, we uh, I try to run it and try to intercept. Uh, it's uh, system calls. Windows probably wants to scan it for some time. Okay, the process ID is this. So let's try. I just try to uh, intercept uh, the system calls of this process. Uh, we can. We could, there's an, also another option. We could run the. If we just want to get all of the system calls, we could run uh, the process in hibernate mode, and after that, get the process ID, intercept the process, the process system calls. But this is not not a case. Uh, we don't want to do that for now. It's just simply uh, we are not interested uh, to intercepting the in, uh, the very first system calls of this process. We just need to investigate the. Uh, TCP communication, so I, I that's enough for me for now. I try to use the trick that we used uh, that we, that I mentioned in a slide. Uh, try to put an EPT hook. Uh, I don't know the other, uh, the uh, the name of the function. Let's just uh, read the address of the function from the uh, MSR from. I think I thirty two L S T A R M S R. Uh, the address is this. If I try to unassemble it here, yeah, it's K I system call sixty four. I'm going to try to uh, put an EPT hook on this address. I, I will I, I, Tree to it because we are not interested in getting uh, before the swap JS. We just want to pass the swap JS um, as the S script. I try to write something to print the system call number, which is located in RX register. Yeah, that's enough. So let, I just try to run this, and uh, you can see that uh, this uh, there are plenty of system calls. We, we didn't limit the system call to just this process. So uh, let's remove uh, this uh, event. Uh, and I try to do it again, but this time by a I want to specify the process ID, so add the process ID here and print. Um, so yeah, let's try to uh, put um, region hyperdg here no vmware and hyperdg i try to press uh yeah as you can see several system calls are running into uh in this pro in this uh, process and uh, we eventually see the uh, actual uh, system uh, actual ret return uh, response of the google server as, as other uh, as you can see here we we, we also have a seventh uh, system call which we previously see that it relates to uh, transferring the data over the network so let's try to uh, use the knowledge that we see in uh, in the slides to investigate the 
uh, structures and the, the data that is transferred between uh, between this application and the Google. So I try to uh, clean clear all the, uh, yeah, events uh, the, the the system call events that we use. And I try to uh, <laughs> just set a break point whenever uh, this process tries to run the seventh uh, system call. So here I just create one if conditional uh, statement, if R is equals to uh, seven, then pause the uh, execution. Yeah. Uh, close the, the Command and yeah, I run it. After that, I I press enter again, and by pressing enter, it tries to from the source code. Uh, you can see that after pressing, it just infinitely, uh, not infinitely, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, it tries to run it again and again. And so I press enter and yeah it's paused again and uh, we can see that uh, hyperdvg triggered uh, the second uh, event uh, so from this point uh, we we can uh, just see all of the uh, registers all of the parameters and all of them are here av available here uh, as you can see, the stack, uh, the stack address, RSP address is still in the care in the user mode. The stack is not changed to a uh, kernel mode stack. And so, uh, if we want to uh, see the uh, uh, IO control code for this, as 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 you probably know, this function is called it, it, it's an x64 uh, bit process so or operating system and the, the uh, column convention here is fast called so uh, the first uh, argument is passed in r6 the second is in uh, rdx this is an r8 and this is an r9 and all of them and uh, other uh, members are also available uh, in, in the stack uh, that, and another thing that we should uh, consider that uh, in a fast call calling convention, let me create a notepad. Uh, uh, if uh, the, the parameters to the stack are passed after uh, the, uh, the parameters uh, are passed like this, the first one is in uh, R6, uh, the second one is in RDX, the third one is on R, uh, is uh, available on R8, R9, and uh, and another parameter goes to RSP plus 20. The next one it goes to RSP plus 28, RSP plus uh, 30. Uh, this is only the case if uh, we are, uh, we just want to call, uh, if we want to call a function. Uh, and we are in uh, the call instruction because uh, you know that whenever uh, you execute a call instruction that then, then uh, the state of the stack is changed the return address is pushed to the stack and the RAP address is changed so if we are in uh, we are not we are not yet executing the call instruction then uh, uh, the parameters are available in this order, but if the, the call is performed and uh, 
we are um, monitoring the uh, the function the uh, the uh, state of the program after uh, running the call then uh, Uh, the parameters are passed like this. Uh, the first parameter is available on uh, RSP plus 28. The uh, other parameters uh, are available on uh, RSP plus 13 and RSP plus 38 and so on. Uh, the same is uh, for the call, the pre-call uh, state of the stack. So basically, uh, we are if we want to uh, get the, uh, the get these parameters, then we have to uh, find uh, the extra parameters on the stack. So I try to. Uh, Let's try to uh, investigate them. So uh, let's just try, let's uh, make a better script uh, and enhance our script. At first, I'm going to use the syscall uh, command. You can also use uh, the same um, command uh, for EPT hook, and we're going to, we, we're just going to intercept the system calls for this process ID and in the script section try to check whether uh, the system call is 0x7 it, this might be changed in the future version of uh, Windows uh, make sure to check it uh, I, in the previous part I I, I uh, told you how to check it you just need to uh go through the instructions until to you until you by using i instrumentation and a stepping command until you reach to a point where a system call wants to be performed and this way you can uh, uh, understand the system call number so uh, here i only check for uh, this system call number 0x7 and in in the if part I, I i just try to connection information so uh, for the ioctl code uh, we, we are we can uh, we we want to understand whether the ioctl code equals to uh, this address uh, uh, yeah. yeah uh, equals to this address but uh, currently we are in this state so if we're gonna see the ioctl code uh, ioctl code uh, for this function we have to go to r6 rdx r8 r9 and uh, uh, the stack uh, rsp plus 28 and the uh, and uh, another one this one or the ioctl code is located in um, rsp plus 13 so let's try to sit for uh, let's uh, try to sit on uh, the hyper dvg this is a 32 bit value so i try to add rsp plus uh, 30 and yeah here is the ioctl code if i just want to more precise precisely print it i can use the d word uh, and use use it like this so here's the uh, the ioctl code for this uh, function call for this system call just try to see whether it's equal to the system call that we see it here or not was it yeah here we are gonna find this address so this ioctl is not equal to what we're gonna find it's different but somehow in the same range so we we, we knew that we are doing uh, we are doing something correct here 
So uh, let's try to enhance the script uh, that uh, that we uh, just made uh, to only intercept uh, the system call uh, system calls that are sent by this specific IO CTL. So I try to copy it here. If uh, if uh, system call is uh, equal to 0 x7 and uh, then we will also check the uh, rsp uh, in, in a d word format we try to only check for 32 bit uh, um, part of this value so this dw is used to make only a 32 bit value <clears throat> rsp plus 30 and check it whether it's equal to this value that we copied from here and if it, it was equal to this value then we will pause the value let's try to run this script first i'll try to remove all the events and then i try to run this script Uh, in the debuggy, I press enter again, and as you can see, HyperDG paused the uh, debuggy, and the control uh, is passed to the debugger. So currently, we are sure that uh, the IOCTL code for uh, this uh, system call uh, for, is equal to what we actually try to see uh, uh, let's see uh, I, I have a print command yeah yeah uh, and you can see here the ioc uh, the ioctl code is equals to this value and we are uh, in the uh, actual place that we want to be uh, the next step is uh, now that we know the IOCTL code uh, is this, uh, we're going to map uh, these uh, structures that we gain from this DR memory project uh, to find the remote address. So uh, uh, second parameter that we want to see here is uh, this input buffer because uh, the user mode uh, application wants to send some data uh, about the connection to the kernel. It, it's performed uh, by mapping this structure to this value. And as you can see, uh, this value is uh, located at RSP plus 38 because we're after the uh, IO control code. So I just try to simply uh, monitor it. Uh, let's try to change the <clears throat> script that uh, we wrote here. Again, for the same command, I, I just try to uh, ch check it uh, before. Uh, We use uh, this command. And you can see that uh, there are different uh, parameters available on the stack. Uh, if you want to see all of them, we can use this, uh, uh, this uh, command here. It, it, the first uh, parameter here points to the buffer, which is the input buffer here so let's uh, see this input buffer and this is the uh, this is uh, this is what the application tries to send to the kernel uh, uh, we, we could do the same by using uh, this command Yeah, as you can see, these two commands are uh, the same. 
and this is the data that that it's uh, that uh, the application tries to send to the kernel. Uh, <clears throat> another uh, point is that uh, we're gonna uh, get we're gonna get the port number uh, based on this structure. Uh, the port number is located on and here and it's the u short and uh, the an unsigned short and uh, it's also an unsigned short uh, if uh, we just want to uh, move to uh, from this structure uh, for the io control code uh, to the port number we could uh, use some um, values to get the port number into two parts. I previously uh, did it uh, by getting a, a port number value in, into two, uh, actually into, uh, they, they pass it into two, uh, uh, two different uh, values. So I try to use one high bit for it, one value for high bit and uh, another one for uh, short or low uh, bits of it. So I try to just use uh, the same command that we used here for, for the stack, POI plus uh, 38. And uh, also another thing, if you just want to make sure that whether you are uh, doing something correct or not is using the calculator, you can use the programming programmer calculator and search for 18 because we use 18 port and try to find 15 in this address, whether the 15 is available or not. Uh, for example, if I want to just use a, a DB or uh, see the data in bytes format. Uh, could you use something uh, here? And as you can see, we have some, some 15 here, which might be the port address. So uh, as I investigated here, uh, we will try to find all the 15 addresses. But uh, for now, let's just try to uh, get the uh, low part of the port address from by using DB command and I try to add a plus a, a uh, one to it. Plus one a to it, uh, because uh, previously I computed the distance between here to here in hex format. So yes, here it is. Uh, One point is enough. Uh, really let's let's see this uh, command uh, in in the print in the print version. And, and it's uh, equals to zero. Uh, we also need to get uh, the other bits, and this time we up. One B. There are several ways of doing. Just try to find the correct address. Just try to add the indexes from uh, these uh, structures together to to get a correct uh, address. Uh, so this is an uh, structure that that uh, other structure here is located into this uh, structure. So we simply need to just uh, investigate this parameter. Uh, after that, we would try to add some bytes to the first uh, first uh, byte of this structure to reach to this address. And I pre-computed it. It's too short uh, 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 fields here, and uh, it's also two U lines, one boolean field. Uh, so I, I try to do that. And uh, another thing is, if we want, we, we want to get the low bit, I use this command. So let's try to see whether we can get 15 or not. Yeah, here it is. So generally, this is the port address.
which is equal to 15 in hexadecimal format and is 80 in decimal format. So we're going to enhance our script by uh, showing a, a print of f that the port address. Address is uh, let's try to combine them. Uh, first, uh, let's do zero. Then I try to move uh, the uh, port number value of eight uh, shifted eight times to the left and uh, or it with this value and and one one thing that uh, you have to always remember and I, I always forget about it you might also forget about it is that everything in hyperdg is hexadecimal so for example if you put something like this you probably uh, expect a 32 uh, shift 32 uh, times um, in decimal but the thing is hyperdg is performed everything in hyperdg is performed uh, in hexadecimal format so for example if you use uh, something like this then uh, hyperdg just try to move it 15 uh, times so just keep in mind that it's uh, like in hexadecimal format if you just want to specify a decimal format uh, specify zero and before the number so it just uh, shift the, the data 32 one in decimal format but uh, we, we could we could use zero and for these purposes and this is something that you should keep in mind it i always have problem with this um, this is a note so after that i try to show uh, the the port address here so uh, i think zero, uh, let's uh, show it in uh, decimal format and and uh, here we can test or uh, a script. Uh, so I just try to move it here. Add some uh, script evaluation blocks here. I try to run it in the target debugger. And yeah. Now uh, we can see that it indicates that the port address is 18. Now let's try to find another um, uh, details of these structures. Uh, we get the port address here. Let's try to find uh, the SIN address or the input address uh, for uh, the IP address of this uh, buffer there, there are some uh, online hexadecimal converters here uh, you can use them to convert your hexadecimal inputs to ip addresses i previously used it so i just get the correct ip address so let's try to uh, investigate it again by using an S script uh, so i, I just uh, i knew that uh, the port address is uh, uh, let me see the port address is located here and after that immediately after that there is the IP address so uh, based on this information that we have uh, now let's try to uh, create several parts because uh, IP has four parts there are plenty of ways of doing this you can read them completely by using one in uh, one uh, uh, keyword in the script engine i try i prefer to do it step by step i, I try to get each part of the ip address uh, in one byte uh, 
So I will add uh, RSP again plus 38. We are in the buffer. And uh, plus A1 because uh, uh, oh, sorry, plus AC because we are after uh, a, a one, uh, 1A, 1B, and then 1C. This is for the first uh, part. Let's uh, do that again and again. And also all of the things that I say about the fast call column convention here, uh, all of them are uh, in hexadecimal format by 28 or 13, I mean in hexadecimal format. So also keep it in mind. And after that, I try to combine all of them into one IP address. Uh, so let's try to or all of them together. Yeah, but before oring them, um, I have to just add them into a correct address for example the part zero should uh, be changed to part zero shifted uh, 24 times this is a simple program that I searched in the internet to find how they can how they uh, convert uh, hexadecimal IP to uh, 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 decimal IP to the way that is conventional for showing the IP addresses uh, and the last one is also not needed. Just uh, by specifying zero and I mean in decimal, I mean 24 bits shifted uh, to the left in decimal format, 16 uh, bits shifted and eight, uh, eight time shifted. So let's try, let's try to see it uh, using this printf. Uh, It's also 32 bit, I think is enough for the IP address. So let's try to change the script. And of course, put them into pieces. So, uh, port address is here, and the IP address is this. But the thing is, let's let's convert it in a way that is. Uh, the conventional form of IP addresses. So IP address is in decimal. Uh, 
generally we have to just move them so i p a d e r do the same thing again uh, the, uh, this was actually the algorithm that i see on the internet they use it to uh, transfer ip in hexadecimal format to a decimal format um, and I shifted zero and twenty-four again do the same but this time sixteen you can search about it you can just search the internet about this algorithm this way of showing just some basic shifting I hope I do it correctly. The last one is um, there's no shift here. Let's test uh, this code again. So it's basically twenty four. Yeah, that, that should be fine. So let's try to run it on hyper DVD and see what we can see. Yeah, we can see that um, this address uh, is uh, is the, this is the hexadecimal uh, for of the address, and this is the address, and this is the port address. But let's uh, to make sure uh, whether the address is correct or not. Let's uh try to convert the hex uh, by using this uh, uh, hex to uh, to the ip by using this address yeah the address is correctly converted and uh, let's get a quiz uh, ip who is uh, for this address and yeah uh, it, it relates to the Google so we are in a good place we get it correctly uh, it points to the IP address of the Google let's uh, let's uh, do that in, in the script I try to again uh, create another uh, script Use this and this is also related to the skull interception. Um, um, and let's just try to combine all of them. We are not, we no longer interested in showing the IP address in hex format. Also, the port address should be added here. 
in the decimal format. And port number is here. Let's try, let's run this a script. First, I clear all the events. Um, This system just goes to halt. Uh, yes. Everything is correct. Let's run uh, this. And again, yeah, uh, you can see that uh, it got some new IP addresses, probably changed some addresses. Um, um, so yeah that's it uh, for the user mode i know let's try to uh, let's uh, expand uh, this formula to other uh, To all the processes, let's monitor all the processes. Uh, the only thing that we should do here is removing this PID. But uh, before that, let's just make sure whether this IP is relating to the Google or not, because it's something new. And yeah, yeah, we got it correctly. I just doubt about it. Yeah, it's for Google still. We got the correct IP address. So let's try to get the, the connection, the connect uh, for all the processes. I just removed the PID. So we are no longer limited to this PID. And uh, yes. I think there's no events. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, uh, before that, uh, let's write the process name. Process name is also WS string, I think. And it's string. Uh, it's just process ID. Process. Name uh, and next to okay, this should be better. I think, yeah. It also shows the process ID and the process name. There is something wrong in this. In this. Yeah, we forget to specify the uh, process ID and the process name. Process ID is dollar PID and the process name is dollar P name. Yeah. So I run this uh, script and return to the debuggy. I try, I run it and see that this, uh, my process tries to connect here. Let's try to run, uh, let's run some other, you can see that MS Edge uh, or this Microsoft Edge uh, continues the execution and connects to several different addresses. We can see, we can, see all of the connections as well as the IP addresses. For example, this address is connected to uh, this port, this address. And here you can investigate all of the connections that are made by your uh, computer. Somehow uh, like Wireshark, but uh, this is more process, uh, process specific and 
I think is uh, it's a very good way of analyzing malwares, analyzing different scenarios of malwares. And we, we could also form it as an uh, S script, like uh, we could uh, move this uh, uh, S script on here, add some PID and add some arc one and save it in and get uh, uh, connections uh, dot ds uh, uh, just try to run and get the pass a bit quickly it has passed uh, again vm here uh event c all um what was the process id of this msh uh, this is the msh process id so i try to uh, run the data script command and add the our argument one argument one is here for process id so let's use this argument one and there is something I made some difference here. Sorry, um, PID is invalid. Uh, why? Uh, Probably this process ID is not valid anymore. No, let's. Uh... This is the script that we can use it. Uh, now let's uh, move to uh, the part where we can intercept the um, actual uh, data that uh, that that are uh, that uh, these uh, that this process tries to communicate. Uh, so I will return to it and again um, based on the slides we know we are interested on um, this uh, IOCTL code so I try to uh, rewrite this uh, script uh, this time uh, we will uh, specify this value because the IOCTL is changed yeah. and I try to remove all of the codes here no longer be needed. This time I try to put pause here. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we are only interested in the target process. So what was the uh, process ID it was this process ID
And so I try to press enter on this uh, console again and we triggered this event. Uh, we are here. Uh, let's try to investigate the buffer again. And we need to go to RSP uh, plus uh, 13. Plus 38, sorry. Uh, first, we need to get the buffer length, but uh, let's just try to see RSP. Yeah, this is the buffer that uh, that actually uh, hyper do, uh, that actually this application tries to send to the kernel. Uh, we don't see anything special here. Uh, but as, as we can see from this structure, uh, the first uh, the first uh. Uh, the first thing in the this structure is this buffer array. So there there is a pointer. Uh, uh there is a uh, pointer at the top of uh, this buffer. So the pointer should be here. We we, we see it in D Q format because it's sixty four. But yeah, this should be the buffer. And as uh, as you can see, it, this contains some information. Uh, the first thing is that it contains uh, a length length of the uh, communication and another pointer. The the other pointer points is also points to another buffer. So this should be uh, the actual buffer that we want to see so uh, this is the another pointers yeah. i mean if uh, we just add uh, we just come from this length to this uh, pointer we have to see this and yeah as you can see here we, we see something familiar which is get http 1.1 uh, and host Google, this is the exact S S string that we try to send as the HTTP uh, here. Yeah, this is the string that we previously sent it. So let's try to write some S script that is able to intercept this uh, S string for this purpose instead of pausing. Uh, I try to uh, uh, first detect the length of the communication. So first I create a buffer length variable and it's equal to a BQ, which, it, uh, which, is a, uh, which indicates that uh, it's the 64 bit value. It's a 64 bit value that we're gonna get from the pointer uh, to the pointer of uh, RSP plus 38. So if this uh, statement is correct, then we have to get uh, this point. Let's try to test it. Uh, the address is invalid, so probably our uh, address indication is invalid. It's 39, why 39, 38. Um, let's try to print it again. And yeah, we got the right uh, uh, size for the packet. And another thing is this. Uh, pointer let's uh, get this pointer uh, if we just simply want to uh, show it uh, in string format we could use the printf and in the printf uh, we could use that the buffer packet uh, 
buffer is um, the string format uh, this one but uh, we'll add a plus eight here because um, we not, we're not gonna get this value we're gonna get this value so let, let's show it uh, to see whether it's correct or not I use the um, this yeah this is uh, this is how we get the correct uh, string buffer and, and if we, if uh, not all of the time it's simple clear text HTTP connection uh, so we just can we can write a simple if a statement uh, to uh, show the buffer based on the buffer length and uh, Uh, we'll show it in hex uh, format. Uh, uh, just get one byte of it. Again, the same uh, equation is used, uh, but this time we so add plus i to it because we want to go further on the buffer yeah we should put i here. so generally we just uh, uh, do reference the rsp plus eight or this buffer uh, address this input buffer here and after that uh we just uh, several time difference it get a, a db of it by dq uh, because uh, we want to see one byte of it and after that i add i to just traverse through the buffer to just go through the buffer uh, before that let's test uh say script Something is not honest or valuable. Let's go. No. What is oh? Uh, we have a syntax error here. Yeah, the syntax is wrong. Uh, no, uh, because we, we're going to go yeah here 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 we got the uh buffer for this uh, packet which is equal to the hexadecimal format of this s string but uh just make sure to add some uh new line spaces i added here to just go to the and uh, next line uh, let's just write some indicators yeah i think this way is better 
and use them in this format for this uh, command. Okay, and now I try to return to the debuggy, press uh, enter again, and we can see that we got the buffer and also the debugger is paused because previously we have a um, other scripts yeah, other scripts so let's do that again um, yeah you can see that we are able to see whether whenever this application tries to send anything let's try to do that for all the processes I think that's not a good idea, but the, the, the thing is, uh, 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 if, if there is a communication, for example, in uh, HTTPS, uh, then uh, we cannot simply see it. The, the buffers are not meaningful. We have to reverse the uh, functions that are related for the encrypt encryption. And after that, create a, a script somehow like this. By using this, we only get the communication buffer that is transferred between uh, the debuggy uh, between the target process and the operating system. So if you just want to uh, uh, see the uh, the actual buffers, uh, the actual unencrypted buffers, for example, for HTTPS, uh, you can do the same, uh, but uh, uh, you, you, but by using this way, you only see the encrypted data. If you want to see some some of the uh, the data in clear text or not encrypted data, you have to reverse the function that are responsible for encrypting data. Um, and that's how you can uh, see everything in uh, clear text. But let's try to see what are, how Windows tries to communicate. Yeah, we got something else. Uh, some uh, some uh, buffers, some other buffers uh, related probably to Microsoft. Uh, there is a get uh, MS uh, MS download probably for uh, uh, I don't know what what's the purpose of this file, but uh, we got uh, this for uh, update probably update of the windows and and you can see that some of them are not clear uh, text probably they are encrypted and this is how windows works let us turn uh, and yeah you can see the data that it uh, tries to transfer between the network and uh, uh, the operating system Okay, enough for that. Uh, let's uh, return the debuggy, and also it makes the computer quite slow because a lot of buffers tries to be transferred. Fine. Right. 